Hey guys, uh, still working on the Philco 077 signal generator, but uh, a box just arrived and I wanted to do a quick unboxing video. I teased this a little bit on my YouTube channel. There's a community tab there you may not have noticed before. It allows me to post photos and little previews of things to come. Um, I've already opened it because I, I wanted to open it at work to make sure it wasn't damaged or anything right away. So what is this? Well. Some of you guessed, you're all wrong. <laughs> yeah, it took me six years to find, but that doesn't mean it's something super uh, valuable or exotic or anything. But, it's somewhat hard to find. It's actually a lower-end TV. It's a funny thing about collecting. Rarity does not equal value. And often some of the harder things to find are the lower end things, like months. You may have heard of months branded TVs. Cheapest TVs made, so now they're actually pretty rare. Why? Because they were cheap and they stopped working and they got thrown away. Well, this isn't a month. Uh, this is actually an airline. But the TV that, uh, that started this is actually a Sonora. Now, I don't think a Sonora or airline made these. They were probably made by a third party like Warwick or something. There were a number of TV manufacturers you've probably never heard of that sold uh, their stuff to retailers that would rebrand them. Uh, so this being one of them, I don't think Sears, I don't think uh, Montgomery Wards, which is airline, and a number of other manufacturers made TVs, but they wanted to have them. So Sonora was a small Chicago brand that made radios. But the TV craze started, and they wanted to have some TVs to sell. Um, and they went on a business, I believe, in the late 50s. So that Sonora set I've got is probably one of the last TVs they ever sold. Well, this is the airline version. It's exactly the same, except for that. The Sonora one says Sonora, the airline one says airline. Otherwise, they are identical, as far as I know. Uh, and hard to find. I've only seen one other for sale ever, and that was a few years ago, and the sale had already ended on eBay, and it sold for over $200, and I was kind of surprised. i got to believe it wasn't a hardcore collector that bought it. It was probably somebody who wanted it for a TV prop or something like that, or some type of special display, because they are small as far as vintage TVs go. Uh, as memory serves, this is like from 58. I'll pull it out of the box and give you a better look at it. So why do I care? Why would I want this? What's the appeal? Well, as far as TVs from mid-late 50s go, this is about as small as they get. It's a 10-inch screen. Uh, I think there might have been an 8-inch RCA portable. I've heard are kind of a pain to work on. Not that this isn't. And you may have seen me do a number of videos on a 10-inch Admiral. Very similar to this. Uh, very similar picture tube. Also a 10-inch. Uh, it's slightly larger because this one they really pushed it to the limit so even the front is curved to come with form fit the CRT and it's pretty cheap if you watch that Sonora series it's a four-parter uh, <laughs> they really cut some corners inside it's transformerless uh, series strong uh, the tubes do not add up to the line voltage so that's a serious filament burner in there to burn off the extra juice. A really tiny flyback, really simple circuitry. So again, that's probably why there aren't many around. Imagine they sold a few of these. I think the, the, for sure it sold under Airline and Sonora and maybe even another brand. Uh, and in years of looking, I've seen very few photos online, and this is uh, only the second one I've ever seen for sale. Not crazy about the color. Oh, the other reason I like the other one is that it's pink. It's pink and white. It's like Screams 50s. This one is sort of tan and beige, or off-white. Tan and ivory, I guess you'd say. But the other one um, has a replacement CRT with a straight gun. It's not aluminized, so it's got a burn in the center. It's also not the right type of CRT. Uh, they're pushing uh, not enough current through it. It's a 600 milliamp CRT replacement. But this is a 450 milliamp series strong set. So that, that set's a mess. Also missing all the knobs, also missing the back. 
If it wasn't for the pink and white uh, curb appeal to it, I never even would have bothered with it. But this one is all here. So now I know what the back looks like should I endeavor to make a reproduction for the other one. Now, I don't know anything about this. I, I, uh, seller didn't uh, know if it worked or not. I, I, I doubt it does. Picture tube could be bad. If there's some serious damage inside, like CRT's bad, because this is a very, very hard picture tube to find. I've never seen one for sale. I think it's a 10ADP4. The Admiral uses the 10ABP4, which is the 600 milliamp series strung CRT, which is also a bit hard to find, but that's a standard filament current and fairly um, available. The nice Admiral sold a ton of those sets, so it's possible to scavenge one of those. But a 10 ADP4, the 450 milliamp variant, this is the only set I've seen that, that uses it, and I've never seen one for sale. So, uh, yeah, um, depending on the condition, oh, <laughs> and I should also point out if you watched. That series on the Sonora, got it restored, got it working, put it back together as best I could, turned it on, and something popped, something smoked, and it died. And I've never gotten back to it to find out why. So, uh, it's in storage right now, I'm not about to dig it out just yet, but one of these days. But in the meantime, I've got this guy. And uh, from what I recall of the photo on eBay. Yeah, it's got a sticker on the bottom. So that is the airline model number. The Sonora model number I believe is 664. It's no year. But I'm pretty sure it's like 57, 58. There's a speaker. Yeah, the power cord is here. I suppose I could try plugging it in and see what happens. Oh man, this is missing something. It's missing the uh, kick-out legs. That's a drag. It should have gone into here. You know, it's just a piece of bent wire, heavy gauge wire. I'm sure I can make a replica, but that's one of the nice little things too. It had a little kickstands on it, sort of to prop it up a little bit. Now, as small as this may be, it's still... <laughs> Uh, 25 pounds, I'd guesstimate. The weight, I'm guessing, is from the steel cabinet and the pitcher tube. That's, that's got to be the bulk of it there. Alright, so just because I've got a PR57 isolation transformer with built-in circuit breaker and current limiter, I will give this a try. But, uh, I don't expect it to do anything. Why? Because a series strung set, and if I remember from the other set, um, it's got a big old power resistor to drop the filament juice down. And I think it uh, had dual selenium rectifiers for the power supply, for the B-plus voltage doubler, and some type of fusible resistor uh, to kind of protect things. One or all of those could very well be burned out. Here it is with the little antennas flipped up, extended out from this little carrying handle. So I hesitate to call a TV cute, but if I had to pick a cute TV, this would be it. So it is plugged into the PR57. Let's see what happens. Huh, the needle did deflect a little bit, so this is drawing some current. Now, the filament could be burned out. And it's just the B-plus drawing some power. I uh, do not see any tubes lighting up. Nope, the tubes are all dark. Right below that, uh, I believe, is a horizontal output tube. Big tube of some sort right down there. And I'm seeing nada. So whatever current draw there is, has got to just be from the B plus selenium rectifier and filter caps out here. It's off right now. On. So that's 
the voltage drop, I'll flip this to current mode. Zero to 1.5 amp scale. Turning it on. So, not very much current. This thing draws off, uh, what did it say, 120 watts, something like that, so it should be like an amp. And also, the fact that the current is not changing is a very good indication that the tubes are not warming up, they're not lighting up. Ah, that's alright. Didn't expect it to work. And it also means uh, minimized chance of somebody else damaging it by running it without doing any surfacing. So, cool. And as I do recall, kind of a pain in the butt to work on. Um, but it should be an interesting little project. And now, like I said, I... I uh, well, hmm. all right. Let's test the picture too, at least, because I gotta decide at some point what am I gonna do with this thing. So I think I just gotta take off two Phillips screws and then get at the back of this. There were just three screws holding on the back. Here's the. Chart. With the 10 ADP4 kinescope. Set that aside. Huh. I guess this must have fallen out from inside. I'm not sure what. came from now. Looks like it might have broken off a little bit. It's uh, like a brass plunger of some sort. Hmm. Oh geez, I hope it's not something like a pin off of the turret tuner. Oh no, this has probably got a wafer tuner in it. It's so small and inexpensive, I'm sure it's got a wafer tuner. Huh, huh. Uh, anyways, so what do we got? Well, I can see right away there's some airline tubes. Probably still the originals, like the damper tube. And the CRT is an airline. Uh, there's a fusible resistor. That looks like it's probably still good. And pretty sure that thing back there is the ceramic... Or no, no, that's a capacitor. It's a ceramic capacitor. But somewhere down in there is the filament dropping resistor. There's a big filter cap right down there. Very hard to get at anything. Oh, there's some dead bugs. Very hard to get at anything with uh, a set like this. Meaning you really got to take it apart to get it out of the cabinet to do anything. Oh, there's also a uh, warranty card that was glued somewhere inside that fell off. So, oh no, uh, that's a pretty darn good original condition. Not too bad this got, looks like it got melted by something. It could be sanded and buffed out if this plastic is thick. Huh. Alright, well, uh, let's get a CRT tester and uh, see how this tests. Shadow, what do you think? Is the picture tube going to test good? Yeah, that's right. It's going to test real good. Huh. This CRT is even stranger than I remembered. It actually runs on 8.4 volts, not 6.3. Alright, so. 10 ADP4, get the bias 52. And here we go. Let's look at that CRT. Juice way up there to 8.4. 
Oh yes, we've got glowage. Excellent. No shorts, no shorts. So really no cutoff control. And not much in the way of emissions. But maybe you got a loose connection. It's really hard to get these uh, stupid little clips on securely in these cramped corners. Hmm. Uh oh. Doggo, what are you doing? What do you got? Hey, what have you got? Let me see. Let me see. What did you find? Really? Huh. That's funny. He actually found the tag off of a dog toy that I cut off. <laughs> <laughs> well, how appropriate out of all the crap down here in the basement you actually found a tag of a dog toy. I think so. I'll get you something better to chew on. But right now i got to finish testing this picture too. Well, unfortunately after about 20 minutes I still got absolutely nothing. Which says to me I've got an open cathode. And uh, you've seen me fix those before. It seems to be more common in portables than anything else. Probably because I get knocked around so much. Possibly I can re-weld it. In fact, I've had a um, pretty high success rate. In fact, in fact, I think I've been able to re-weld a cathode in every open cathode CRT I've encountered. Sometimes they reopen and whack them again and re-weld. So what am I talking about? One of the elements inside the gun has broken loose, the cathode in particular, so there's no way for the electrons to flow through the gun. So basically the process to re-weld it is crank up the juice and hold down the red button and tap the neck on the CRT and hope the two loose metal ends come together and weld back together. I'm not going to do that right now though, I need to really get this opened up so I can get in there better and see what I'm doing. Possibly I could touch up the solder joints but they look pretty clean so that seems a little unlikely. So a little disappointing, a little disappointed but uh, otherwise it's in really really good cosmetic condition. It's all here and after years of looking I'm happy to get it even if the CRT is a dud. That's gonna be it for now. I hope you enjoyed this little look at this airline and I suggest you go and take a look at the four-part Sonora 664 restoration series. I'll put a link in the description. That's all for now.